Thursday, RPC family. This is Pastor Kevin. I'm excited to take a few moments uh, to share in this Know to Grow series for this Thursday, and we have a lot to dive into. Uh, I was told the topic of this week is the rapture, and uh, the rapture also, uh, we can, we've heard it as the premillennial second coming of Jesus. Uh, there's a whole lot to dive into. We see when we hear the rapture, uh, we have seen it in films, motion pictures, both in the Christian world and in the secular world. Uh, we have heard about the saints being called up into the clouds. And uh, we want to just dive into some scriptures to find, because we believe in the rapture. We believe that Jesus is going to come back for his people. We believe that there are signs. We believe we are in the signs right now. There's so much going on in the world. So I want to take a few moments as we learn about the snow to grow to find out what is really the rapture, because there's a whole sequence of events that happens in the book of Revelations when it comes to the end times. And for us that are walking this earth, if we're here when the Lord returns, that's kind of the initial sequence once his return comes to get his saints is going to lead into tribulation, is going to lead into everything. But today we want to focus a little bit more on the rapture. So we, and we believe this because we've got some good scriptural references that we can back this up with. In 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it says it will happen in the moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. So first, uh, when the sound hits, and it's the sound of that trumpet, uh, the dead in Christ will rise, followed by those of us who are believers that are still here at the time. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So initially, before all the tribulation, everything happens, but the rapture, he is coming to get his people, those who are dead, those who are alive in Christ, and we are going to go up to the clouds together. But how, how will we know when this is going to happen? How can we be ready for when the end times is going to happen? How can we set and gauge and think, is, is the rapture... Because uh, it also says in the scripture, Jesus even references in um, Matthew 24, um, in, in verse 36, he says, No one knows the day, no one knows the hours when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father knows. And so uh, we were rest assured. He also, if you jump forward a little bit in the Matthew 24, he said, you will hear of wars, threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things will take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go against war against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. Uh, we also see um, if we scroll down, it says sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. There is sin will abound. Um, nation, wars, famine, pestilence. I, we see so much going on right now uh, in our world. It, it just seems day to day when we check out the news, when we when we check out social media, when we find things, we're constantly hearing things that it just sounds like the world is crumbling in front of us. I don't know, but that definitely sounds to me like it could be the time. We don't know, but I do know that I would want to be prepared. Um, in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1, he says, You should know this, Timothy. Um, as he's reading this letter and the apostle is just trying to urge Timothy to know that in the last days, there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful. They will be proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They will be reckless. They will be puffed up with pride rather than pleasure. 
They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Church, we need to be ready because we are living in times. Could God come right now? He could come as I'm making this video and we could be in the presence of our eternal God. But the thing is, we have to pursue that. We have to live like any moment our Lord could return. And we have to continue to share this good news of Jesus, the life, because we may not understand everything. Revelation is such a complicated book. There are so many prophecies. There are so many things when you read through it that you're trying to understand and you're trying to learn. But if there's one thing that I do know is that at the end, God wins. Uh, at the end, there there is a conclusion, and that conclusion is eternity. And I know that I want my eternity to be in the presence of my Lord and my Savior. And to think that in just a moment, if I could live righteously, if I could work hard, I could go on to be with my Savior. That Could you imagine that? To be chosen, to be called up, to hear that sound. And not have to go through so many things and tribulations and, 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 and pestilence and everything that is going to come our way. All of the plagues, everything that will happen. But to be in the presence of your God. And you know what? God, he joins us when we ask for his presence to be with us right now. So I want to encourage you today. Know that um, as we are in crazy times. And the end times seem to be unfolding in front of us. The one thing that we do have right now that we know is time. So take time today. Ask the presence of God to come to wherever you're at. If you're watching this at home, if you're at work for a few moments, if you're in your car, whatever you're doing, ask the presence of God to come. And God, just give an understanding. Help us understand, God, the world that we're living in. Help us how to understand, to minister, and to be holy and be righteous in this world that we're living in. Because there's so many things that people are loving right now and proud of right now and boastful of right now that are not from you. And if your trumpet sounds, God, we want to be in your presence. That's where we want to be. So today, I just want to encourage you. Seek God and know that he is coming for his children. It may be crazy, but in a blink of an eye, just like that, we could be called up to the presence of God. Thanks for taking a few moments to be with me. Have a great Thursday, Sunday. We can't wait to see you at church. One service, 1030 a.m. And we're just going to have a great time in the presence of God. Amen. We'll see you guys next Thursday. For